Right, a bit of a hike to get here, down at uh, a mark in between Sidmouth and Branscombe. Um, there's a strong westerly wind coming towards me here. The sea's uh, a little bit colour to it and a little bit choppy, so um, we're hoping uh, for a smooth round or a small eyed ray. Um, so it's taken me, well, it doesn't take me that long to get down here, but it's all about 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes to actually get to, to where I want to start fishing from. Uh, we're just after what, hour and a half after, or a couple of hours now actually after high tide. So we're going to be fishing down here for a few hours. Um, bait wise, I've got plenty of peeler crab. Um, so we're going to have peeler crab on one and uh, I've got uh, some sand eels with me. So we're going to yeah, alternate between the, the two sand eels and peeler crab and um, hopefully into the fish. Um, we're fishing in onto clean ground here. We've got uh, rocky marks in between us. So there's also a possibility of uh, a bass. Um, it's overcast, uh, it's quite fresh. Chances of uh, um, some light rain or mist, but uh, hopefully it won't be too bad. And at the moment, I've got the beach to myself. So uh, let's, uh, let's bait up, cast out and see what happens. A bit windy, um, so hopefully um, you ain't going to get too much wind noise over the mic. But uh, this is the first uh, first one going out, so it's uh, a short pulley rig, uh, just over like two and a half foot. So I've got uh, 80 pound main line, and I've got 60 pound of a snood. Uh, I've got a 30 uh, on the bottom and a 40 circle on the top for the panel, which has actually been tied off. So let's get this one out. Um, unfortunately at the moment there's quite a bit of a slope down here um, and because it's quite windy if I'm up at Ayatiri and try and cast out I ain't going to get that far so I'm going to have to cast down from the lower slope as it, I'm not going to get the distance that I want um, I just got to be careful that I don't hit the bank behind me anyway let's get this one out Right, next rig to, to send out there is with um, a couple of sand eels on it. These are pretty small sand eels, so I've dropped down this hook size. So I've got a 2.0 on the bottom and a 1.0 chino on the top. I'm using um, a bar rig. Uh, I make these up myself. Uh, this actual one is about 20 centimetres in length. Um, I use the fluorescent rubber beads. Um, I use that as a stop. I've got 40 pound as uh, my long length of snood and 60 pounds um, around where the bait is. Just give it a little bit more protection. Um, I don't think there's any more spider crabs out there at the moment. Anyway, so um, send this one up. The actual length of this snood, I use about um, about four foot, um, chops and chains, but normally it's about four foot. Um, so um, let's get this one out there and see what happens. I just had a slack line bite and uh, Got the first hound of the session. Um, so it's uh, yeah, a reasonable size, probably five, six pound or so. Um, hopefully there might be a few more of them. Uh, so uh, I'll get this one back, put back as quickly as I can and uh, cast back out there. All right, now sooner as I cast out, sat down, put my jacket on, I had a nice, uh, another slack line bite. So this, this one's, uh, the first one was a male, this one's a female. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit, of, a bit of a run of them at the moment. So 
at the moment I'm just uh, just having the, the one rod with uh, the peeler crab and the other rod with the uh, sand deal because I don't want the rods to be going off at the same time um, so yeah so nice you know hopefully a bigger one will come along but this is a normal stamp of them and if you know in the conditions at the moment you know, the wind a little bit of drizzle um, I'm happy to, you know, to catch these too so anyway I'll get this one put back and uh, again bait up and uh, cast straight back out there all right, just go through the setup that I'm using. Um, so, as for normal, I've, I've got my pen fathoms, uh, which have been magged for casting. I've got a 20 pound mainline on there, and that's uh, with uh, 80 pound uh, shock leader. I've got the uh, Ziplex um, M4 GTs, and uh, the walk itself was. <laughs> right from over there up those cliff tops there um, so it ain't too bad it's, it's just the steepness of the steps that's all especially carrying a big um, the box on your back like you know with all this gear here um, it's just a bit nasty like if you take a little trip uh, you'll be tumbling all the way down the steps anyway any one, one other person has walked down these this is up here because it's, it's about a mile or so uh, to have to get down here um, so yeah I got the place to myself um, yeah water is uh, pretty coloured um, it's not too bad Sidmouth down there uh, you know, a bit of a drizzle but uh, ain't been too bad um, yeah so hopefully I'll, I'll fish for another well, at least two, three hours or so just over high tide um, what, I'll, what I'll do is I'll come back down here again next week because uh, we've got uh, the evening um, high tides um, back into sort of like spring tides it's just coming off neat tides at the moment uh, and uh, the weather's meant to be better so we haven't got these stronger strong gusts of winds I mean it's not too bad but all of a sudden you get this huge gust of wind so obviously you can see I've uh, secured my tripod um, I, I bring bungees with me as well so if there's a big boulder I can attach the bungee to a boulder and strap that to my trail prod so it doesn't fall over um, but yeah it ain't been too bad uh, the only thing I ain't going to look forward to is that uh, the slog back up to the car park but hey I've you know I've, I've had a couple of smooth hands obviously nothing on the um, on the uh, the sand hills at the moment but uh, I prefer to probably use the sand hills like you know if it was it was a bit a little bit calmer uh, and going into into the night to, uh, to try for the small live race. Anyway, um, yeah, well, I've baited up and ready to go. So uh, we'll just sit back for a bit and uh, see what happens. I'm just going to do a little bait up for you to show how I do the uh, the peeler crabs. So um, once I once I peeled the crabs, I leave the lungs on. I don't bother with them, I'm taking them off. Because um, of the size of the crabs, these ones are well, I wouldn't say small, but sort of the average size. So I cut one and a half. So I'm going to use a one and a half crab. 
So then the other one, that's whole, I'll just give it a cut from the head to about halfway. Split that open. Put the two of them together, baiting needle. In through both of them. And then with the bait elastic, uh, I use fine bait elastic. I've been using this bait elastic for years. Um, so I wrap it up. Get it from um, Exeter Angling, which unfortunately is closed now. But I uh, did manage to get a, a big load of it. So it'll keep me going for a while. So maybe three or four turns up and down. Because it's fine bait elastic, I don't tighten it up. I just give it a pull. It doesn't unwrap for me. So that's it, fine. All done. Um, you give it a hook length. And this bait in the needle, well, this bait needle I've got, I've got a hole in one end. So I put the the end of the uh, end of the hook in there. Pull it round. Keep it tight. Push it on, and then I just push it up over the end of the knot. So I've got my circle hook at the top, which ain't actually clipped in to the bait itself. It's just free free up the top there, and I've got my free O hook at the bottom. So that one's all done, ready to go. Uh, generally, that's how I always put my peeler crab. Do you use my peeler crabs? I mean, if I've got a bigger peeler crab or some softies, then I'll just use the one peeler crab. Um, and also, it depends how I've tied off the uh, the four row hook at the top. Yeah, if I if sometimes I bite it right up to the to the top of the uh, three row hook, then I just need to use a smaller crab. But uh, that's the sort of size crabs I like for smooth bounds. You know about a crab and a half and that's it all ready to go um the wind's died down frankly now it's warmed up a bit the sun's come out so uh what well, we're now three o'clock now so we've got uh, just under a couple of hours before high tide so we'll yeah we'll carry on fishing until my bait runs out i suppose so uh let's put that one on the bait uh, the bait hook and um go on the, the, the bait rest on the tripod and um, sit back and have another cup of tea. Right, I had uh, another nice slack line bite then and uh, slightly bigger one now. This one gave me a bit of hassle because it swam across my other line. Um, but you can see the circle hook there, right in the corner of the mouth. So this, yeah, this one's a nice one. Still not, you know, double figure, figure, but it's the biggest one so far. Um, yeah, it's just a pity because I mean, uh, I get nice slack line bites, a bit of the, you know, the real clicking, screaming off, and uh, up I get and into it. So I haven't got time really to press uh, record on the on the uh, on the mobile light with camera. Um, if I do, so, um, I'll either miss the fish or something will happen. So. Um, when I come down again, you know, uh, uh, fish here at night time, then um, I'll bring the GoPro view. But this one's a male, so we've had two males and a female, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so this one's a nice one. Ah, uh, right. Get them unhooked and get them put back. All right, that, that's... The hook came straight out, barbless hook, and I had no problems, you know, I managed to, uh, to bring this one in, it never threw the hook or anything. So yeah, uh, let's crack, oh, back, <laughs> so let's, yeah, get this back one, get, get this back in and, uh, yeah, crack on. Happy days.
Right, managed to, managed to film that one. Um, unfortunately, because I left it, it swam across my other line again, but uh, at least you can see that I'm getting them. So this one's slightly bigger. This one's uh, the biggest one so far. This is uh, eight, eight pound five, so I weighed this one. Um, so uh, that's four smooth hands, and um, it's, it's pretty good because I wasn't expecting to get all this actually, but uh, it was worth the worth the tab down here, like you know. Um, but anyway, again, you know, on the peeler crab, doing the business. So uh, let's get this one put back, sort my mess out, and uh, yeah, maybe a few more casts left in the in today's session. But anyway, chop with that. Yeah, so that's eight eight pound there. £8.5 on the nose. Right, well that's my last uh, last cast out there. Uh, the wind's picked up a bit now. So it's, um, well it's just gone six actually. Um, all the peeler crabs are gone. Uh, I've had uh, five takes. Um, four I've managed to get. One because I was messing around with the camera again, trying to get it uh, on, um, on shot. Um, uh, I missed, but um, it was quite a good take actually. It was taking quite a lot of line and, and uh, the, uh, the ratchet was going. Um, but unfortunately, when I managed to get over to it, um, it the line went slack, um, pulled into it, but nothing there. But uh, yeah, that's what happens. Um, nothing on the sand hill. Uh, normally, uh, if I'm fishing for a small eyed ray, I'll, I'll use peeler crabs. I mean, all, all, most of my small eyed ray down here in um, my local area has been on uh, a peeler crab. Um, but I didn't really want to fish with peeler crab on both rods just in case uh, I get a double hook up or a double run on the smooth bounds and uh, that could lead to all sorts of things but anyway so it's um yeah it's been a good session uh, where am I going to be fishing next uh, I'm not too sure we it's, we've had quite a bit of um of these westerlies and showers for the last week or so so I think going into next week looks like it's going to calm down a bit um, if it does I'll, I'll hopefully be able to get out onto some of my reef marks and uh, uh, do a bit of rough ground fishing but um, anyway yeah thanks for watching and uh, till next time you yeah, know good fishing cheers